Virtual simulation of operations is already part of everyday life at some hospitals. However, many are not yet familiar with this type of training, yet it can bring some advantages for the surgeons. The aim is to create a training tool that is useful so that you get skills that are then replicated in real life. Simulation training is not replacing the current ways of training, it's complementing them. And as a consequence, you really have to figure out how am I training now and how can I use the simulator in the most efficient way to improve that way of training? It's sort of a staggered approach and it has to integrate with all the other activities so that it makes sense and that it is really transferring the best way possible. So the structure behind the training and making it a structured approach is very important. Arthroscopic simulators have been used at Martin Luther Hospital in Berlin for several years. Yeah. We actually do team training with our whole team once a year. We also hold arthroscopy courses, and that's where we actually also have these virtual simulators firmly in place. Really, the advantage is that you can get feedback on a lot of arthroscopic actions, like the travel length of the instruments, the path in the joint, and also potential arthrogenic cartilage damage. I think due to the cost pressure, the economic situation, less and less time can be given to training. And against this background, simulation is of course gaining enormous importance for arthroscopic surgery. For efficient training, Jan Hillebrand recommends integrating the simulators firmly into the training and creating the right training environment. It has to integrate with all the other activities so that it makes sense and that it is really transferring the best way possible. So the structure behind the training and making it a structured approach is very important. The second part is that you need the endorsement from senior surgeons. You really need to make sure that trainees understand that this is serious. It is not a toy. It is not something that just sits there as a fun game that you can sometimes use, but it is an important and essential part of your training. And if this is communicated by senior surgeons, then you will see trainees adapting that behavior. What fascinates me the most uh, with this new simulator is really taking not just the operation in consideration, but the entire preparation, positioning, throw car, and being able to simulate as close as possible to the reality. Everything is integrated, so really when you train or simulate an operation, it's just not the technical part, it's all the steps before that. And then obviously it's also the practical part, the step-by-step -step learning, the introduction, the different levels. To have force feedback, you do not need to calibrate the instruments anymore, meaning it's available anytime you use it. Haptics, also via the real surgical instruments, is the essential features of the simulators to make the exercises as realistic as possible. We use a variety of different technologies. Um, often we use an anatomical phantom or an anatomical replica of the part of the body that you operate on. And that could be, for example, a knee joint. And in this case, you would have a plastic knee. Inside of the plastic knee, you have all the different plastic structures like your tendons, ligaments, menisci, bones. And that is what you feel when you interact with the model. Um, as a consequence, uh, you have that haptic sensation. In case of the knee, also very important, you can actually move the knee around as you would in a real patient. The benefits of virtual reality for training have already been proven, and Jan Hillebrand believes they can be expanded even further. On a simulator, you get about 50% faster at a certain procedure over time, um, and maybe in the OR, this translates to 30-40% um, faster performance. As these technologies evolve and improve, they would become closer and closer to real life and they would also be able to replicate much more of the different real life operations. And the consequence would then be that hopefully we could move ever more training out of the OR. Not in the sense that you shouldn't train in the OR, but that you have ever more options of preparing well for your training in the OR and doing a lot of preparational work on simulators at, uh, ahead of time. 
And I believe that is a trend that we are seeing and that I hope will continue where we just offer much more realistic solutions for all sorts of procedures and um, that they can help surgeons more and more to go to the OR with better preparation to the degree where hopefully they arrive and uh, absolutely avoid making any mistake that could have been avoided.